So today we will be talking about um, the situation that Morocco has been facing for the past years. With, um, in fact, the city has been facing a lot of water, uh, situation of water scarcity. However, some solution have been applied and some more solution will be applied from the country itself in order to provide um, a better future when it comes to fresh water. So Morocco is a, it's a country located in the northwest of Africa and it witnessed a lot of different features um, geographical, geographically speaking. Um, in fact, it is wet by the North Atlantic Oceans, um, mostly more than half of the country. Um, however, as we move more inland, uh, we move up in altitude. Um, in fact, we can witness um, really high mountains towards the inside of the land. And then moving towards the west area, we found the, sub the, the Saharan um, Desert. So the reason behind the city um, lacking um, fresh waters can be seen in four different main points. The first is the lack of fresh water resources. Um, to be specific, the country does not have many lakes or rivers. There are two main rivers that wet the north side of the um, the country. When you, as we move towards the middle and south, there is no type of fresh water um, resource that can be used by the people um, and can be gathered in order to do any function that fresh water is um, required to. In addition, the land itself does not favor fresh water. Um, in fact, as the we move towards the middle and west area of the country, we witness high mountains and uh, Sahar the sub-Saharan desert. These two features right there, where roughly 80% of the landscape of the country does not, um, does not aid the infrastructure, um, the infrastructure of the city, science it does not, um, it's really hard to kind of create pipelines that go through those areas, since it would be really expensive to create tunnels that go through the mountains. And plus, uh, areas such as desert are so dry that it does not um, provide the city with any aquifers that can be um, dug up and, you know, um, can be dug up and obtain fresh water from it. Then also, for the past uh, years, the city has been witnessed climate change. In fact, Morocco is an heavily reliant country on uh, rainfalls and of gathering fresh waters from um, clouds and other features like that. Um, but with climate change, the rainfalls, uh, the, the amount of volume that the water has been coming down has been lowering and less days through the years have been actually providing water to the city and this created a lot of dr more dry land, um, creating a little bit of more of expansion of the Sahara Desert and uh, dry earth that does not provide any fresh water. And then lastly, another issue that can be seen with Morocco is the non-efficient infrastructure. Um, already the city struggles scattering fresh waters, but the fact that many small cracks throughout the pipelines of the city makes uh, water crack and, and makes the water lack, uh, um, lack pressures to arrive to the houses, meaning that it would be really hard for water to get to all the neighborhoods with the same powers, and this could lead to people only obtaining water through certain times of the day. There have been several things that has been done in Morocco to help with their water scarcity issue. One of the first things that I found through research is Law 1095 that was enacted in 1995. The main objective of this law was to rationalize water use, provide universal access to the water resource, reduce disparities between cities and villages, and to ensure water security across the country. There were four other principles to this law, and those included water as a limited resource and a public good. The second one would be regulation of development, distribution, and sale of potable water. The third one was improved agricultural water development and use. And the fourth was prevention of illegal water resource development or conduct that causes pollution to water. Their hopes with this law was to um, reduce the overuse or non-essential use of water. Um, in 2009, Morocco actually launched the National Water Strategy and National Water Plan, or the p and &E. This focused on the role of complementary water manage management actions to address water problems and achieve coordinated management of supply and demand while ensuring equal distribution between rural and urban areas. This basically... Um, goes back to the law in 1995 and just reinforces um, the management of water and how they're going to use that, um, whether it be 
through um, agriculture or through business or for everyday use. Um, and it also enforces that the big cities are not just the places that need water and the small villages also benefit from the water as well as the big cities. And they really want to make sure that the villagers get the water that they need since they see that this is an issue of people dying from the lack of water. Morocco has done a great job of determining which departments um, basically distribute the water and determine where the water goes. There are four different departments that have the majority of the decisions. Um, that would be the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries, Department of Energy, Mines, Water and Environment, Interior Department, and the Finance Department. The Department of Agriculture um, obviously goes straight to agriculture and food production. Um, the Finance Department basically just oversees industries and drinking water users and how that water gets distributed to those people. The Interior Department also kind of oversees the industries and the drinking water users um, and kind of communicates with the Finance Department and how that should be um, taken, taken about. And then finally, the fourth department, the Department of Energy, Mines, Water, and Environment, kind of oversees the river basin and where that water goes. They also um, oversee energy production in terms of water and how that's used for the energy production. And along with the Interior and Finance Department, they help with the industries and drinking water users. What is being done? Morocco is currently being used as a testing site for an extremely new and innovative idea that was created by a nonprofit organization in Canada. In Morocco, a nonprofit organization called Darcy Hamad, their president, learned about a netting technology that was created by the FallQuest, a nonprofit organization in Canada, and decided this would be the perfect way to help out the people of Morocco. Although Morocco has been facing heavy drought, the nearby Atlas Mountains consistently remain surrounded by fog. Although the fog itself rarely produces rain, it's filled with water that can be collected by using fine mesh nets that trap water when wind pushes the fog through it. The water then drips into plastic containers and flows through a piping system into reservoirs, which is then piped to local villagers' homes. Fog water doesn't contain pollutants. Therefore, it can be already used as soon as it's collected. Darcy Hamad has improved upon the already beneficial system created by FallQuest and created their own more efficient system called Cloudfisher. Using this, they have built seven reservoirs that have pipes extending to reach nine different villages in Morocco. This has created a fog water harvesting system, the largest one in the world. What will be done in the future? So the biggest issue Morocco has is in fact its government and their issue with long-term planning, which obviously comes across with challenges, both man-made like population growth and urbanization, and natural ones like climate change, which is becoming more of an issue uh, each year. And they're definitely looming over urban uh, water security in Morocco. So urban water management must embrace um, broader water resource management issues if they want to proceed in any direction. So what they're going to do in the future, as they're already doing, but they definitely need to improve in that, is getting help, more help from shareholders, uh, their own government, and other international businesses, mostly nonprofits. The improvements they're going to go with, and they, in the past years, and all around the world, uh, other parts that have issues with water so that would improve institutionally and regu regulatory framework and that could accelerate the adaption of wastewater reuse uh, rain harvesting and fixing the pipelines to reduce any leakage because at the point they're at right now any drop of water could really help someone out another thing there are going to do is to decrease technical co cost because it would make people happy and it would also make it cheaper for them to to install different mechanisms 
Another thing they are looking into are building more dams. It would definitely help them with water supply, but there are also some issues that they might come across, like changing of the environment. Uh, <clears throat> the biggest goal they might be looking at is aquifer recharge. It's a really delicate thing to do, especially when we talk about how aquifers cannot fill back with water. And in order to do that, they will need to straighten of underwater um, governance, which is not an easy task uh, with their limited technology. So they will need to ask more international companies and shareholders to supply it, or in fact, um, bring more workers to it. <clears throat> 